Hi guys, it's Kirsty here and thanks for tuning in to my channel Crypto Flamingo. And also, thank you for tuning in to the first episode of my new series, What the White Paper. So um, I'm going to start off by having a look at the white paper for Oath Protocol. I warn you now, this is probably going to be like a massive rant because all this series is going to be about is me being a total grammar Nazi and critiquing white papers on what I think they did wrong. So you're warned, if it doesn't interest you, move on now. <laughs> okay, so here we go. So first off, the cover page. Image quality, very poor. That doesn't look very professional. They also have the draft number is starting at two. If this is your first public release, you should be starting at one. Um, if you did have a release before, I would like to see a change history or at least be able to access that document so I can review the change myself. Next, the footer says subject to further revisions. That's unnecessary. Any viewer of a document knows that any document is liable to change, so that's unnecessary. Most importantly, they have no release date on this document. I would like to see when it was released so that if I'm reviewing it with intent to invest in, for now it's March 2019, how, when was that written? Was it written a week ago or was it written a year ago? And that just gives me a bit of confidence in how relevant the content is. Next, the document length is currently sitting at 50 pages, excluding the prelude. That's very long. I would like to see it at no more than 15, including the prelude, including the references. The prelude is numbered in normal numbers, one, two, three. That's not usually the case. Usually a prelude is done in Roman numerals, I, 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 I. Meaning if I have the hard copy in my hands and I drop it, I don't put the prelude three in place of document three. It's just the way that it's done usually. So next, the disclaimer. You can read it yourself on the screen as my criticisms, the quotes that I've pulled out. But just as an overview, I think that it's too long. It's three pages long. Understand it has become a bit of a standard practice for white papers, but there's no reason why you couldn't put a summary and then put a link to the document itself so that people can view the content out with the document. Next, you have case studies in here which show why your product would be relevant in real world. However, you've told me it more than once. I don't think that's important enough for you to waste my time and make me read it twice. Put it in once, leave it at that. Next, the technical information. So you've put on pages 25 and 26, actual code. And on pages 27 to 30, you've put in actual mathematic algorithms. Do you think that suits the audience of your white paper? If it doesn't, then put in a summary point and add a reference so that if someone wanted to view the detail, they would know where to find it. I just feel like that's information which you could have omitted from the main body of the paper. So next, the resources and advisors. You have allowed 15 pages for this section based on one per page. I think that's too long. That's wasted space. Instead, I would like to see just a little image of who the person is, their name, their title, and a short bio, and then maybe a link to their LinkedIn if I want to view more information in my own time. I also feel like the consistency between these resources has not been considered. So the pictures, for example, are all in different formats. They look as if the author of the document has just mailed their team and said, send me any picture you've got, rather than organising to get a photography shoot done where you could ensure that they're all of a similar format and quality. For example, they have one who is in black and white. They've got one who's not looking at the screen. They've got one who looks like they're in a graduation gown. It just doesn't look professional. And additionally, showing someone in a graduation gown puts up a red flag in terms of are they qualified to do the role that they've been employed for. Also, the text content in terms of the biography is inconsistent. I believe that this should have been done in a format where they were all the same. So their name, their position in the company, their qualifications, and then their key capability or USP as to why they will be a valuable asset to your company. I don't need to know if they have a girlfriend and five cats. That's irrelevant and it's a waste of my time reading it. So next, some general format criticisms. So the header logo on pages 45 and 46 is overlaid. Just looks silly, like it's been pasted in late and they haven't realised that the header's already implemented a logo, so it's created an overlay, so it looks smudged. And the English content on page 42 is wrong. They have put a resource in, which is the one in the graduation gown, who's employed as the content manager, meaning she's going to be responsible for any written content which is going to market the company and 
the English on her section is wrong. That's terrible because she's going to be responsible for content. I'll read it and you can see. It says, along with the consensus building of the public to blockchain, she kept her eyes and worked on development of blockchain, smart contracts and risen of protocols. What does that mean? I just think that's pretty stupid that the one that has the English faults is the one that's going to be producing English documentation. Sort it out. Finally, the references on page 50. They've only put two references, which is weird. I would have expected more. But failing that, they also have not used Harvard referencing format. So I understand there's lots of ways you can reference and maybe they don't need to use the Harvard way. However, they haven't even put when it was accessed. So that if I was to open that resource, I couldn't tell if I was looking at the same version as what they used. I'd like to see when you accessed it and which version it was. So finally, to summarise, I think that they need to think more about who is the audience of their white paper. Is the content within the document relevant to them or is it too technical? Could it be put elsewhere? Could it be referenced? And can we shorten the document to be as relevant as possible? Next, you need to think about KISS. Keep it simple, stupid. You don't want to make any of the content too complex. It needs to be clear as day so that people know what they're getting into. Next, the references. Again, I want to see when they were accessed and I want to make sure the list is complete. And finally, consistency. Generally, everywhere it needs to be consistent because the more consistent it is, the more it looks planned and professional. The main item I tore apart was the uh, resources section. But generally, this should be the case across the entire document. So, yeah, that's my little uh, five minute rant of white papers and what to do and what not to do. So I hope this has been kind of useful. And uh, yeah, if you like my content, please subscribe to my page. I also have the strategy analysis one, which I swear is less ranty. And if you've got any comments, please leave it below and I will get back to you. So thanks very much for listening, even though it was a big rant. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Bye.